is SE Featured. This is the power of sports. In my life and our family's life, it's a miracle story. I'm not a big miracle believer, but after this, no doubt in my mind. Stanley and I have known each other for more than 40 years. We spent 14 seasons together when he was on my staff. He's a baseball lifer. If he's not talking about the ball game, I'll guarantee you he was talking about his four children. My daughter's name was Amy. She always come over and sit with me. She liked me to just rub her hair and mess around and you know, she was daddy's girl. She was kind of like a mom to me. She was a tomboy. She wanted to go out there and get a hit, you know, just as much as we did. She was always joking with anybody, pulling pranks on people, and she was, she was a pretty cool girl. During spring training of 1992... There it is! Talk to me, baby! I promoted Rich to be my third base coach for the Pirates. We were loaded. One of the favorites to win the National League. But just before the season, Rich got news that had him rushing back home to his 17-year-old daughter, Amy, in Arlington, Texas. The phone rings. And it's Amy. She goes, Dad, uh, there's something I got to tell you. I, I have a brain tumor, and I'm sorry. She was more scared for how it would affect the people around her. So and that's why she said, Dad, I'm sorry. So here comes the doctor. And I just told him, I said, tell me straight up. Tell me straight. He said, Rich, he has nine months to live. No, that's the first time it hit me. Nine months to live. You feel guilty? If one of my boys would say, hey, Dad, let's go out and play catch, let's go out and hit, okay, I'll be right out. And Amy would say, hey, Dad, let's go out and, and c c can you come out and pitch to me? And I'd say, I'll be out in a minute, I'm watching this game. How selfish could I be? That meant the world to her to go play with her dad. Amy insisted that her dad return to Pittsburgh while she spent the entire summer undergoing chemo and radiation. That October, with our Pirates playing the Braves in the NLCS, Rich flew Amy, her brothers, and her best friend Cindy to Pittsburgh for game five. From their seats behind home plate, the girls joked about Rich's distinct style of coaching third base, cupping his hands whenever a pirate reached second. What is he doing? What is he saying? Is he ordering Chinese food? Is he, you know, do you want pizza or Chinese? We were having the time of our life. We won the game. We're driving. And she leans up and she puts her arms around my neck. She goes, hey, Dad. She goes, when you... And you get down in that stance and you cup your hands like this, he goes, what are you telling those guys a second? The chicken runs at midnight or what? What are you talking about, Amy? And she's just laughing like hysterically, I don't know. So we're all like, all right, the chicken runs at midnight. Well, that was our kind of family motto throughout those playoffs. The chicken runs at midnight. Nobody knew what it meant. But believing her father could use the levity, Amy called our clubhouse in Atlanta hours before game seven. One of the clubhouse kids, he comes down, he says, Richie, we got this note from upstairs. He says, dear dad, the chicken runs at midnight. I love Amy. Chico Lynn, our second baseman, he looked over my shoulder and he goes, hey man, what's these? And I goes, chicken runs at midnight, man.
she's like, did you hear him? What did he say? And kind of made her feel like maybe she was there. We knew if they won game seven, me, Amy, Cindy, we were going to the World Series. Pittsburgh two, Atlanta one, with two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning. Line drive and a base hit! Just as the score of the tying run, Green to the plate, and he is safe! Safe at the plate! The Braves go to the World Series! First thing I thought of was, I want to take her to the World Series. The thing I didn't know until later, I wanted to take her real bad. But she wanted me to go to the World Series. After that, the Chicken Runs of Midnight came up probably 10 times a day. Every time I left her, I love you, chick runs a minute. We didn't know what, what the heck it meant, but it meant a lot to us. And now we get to the end of January, and uh, the doctor came in. He just looked at me. He says, Rich, I want you to come. He says, you're not going to make it. doesn't hit you that it's over. This can't be, this can't happen. In 1997, four years after Amy passed away, Rich joined me as a Marlin third base coach. His sons, Tim and Mike, regularly worked as our bat boys. Near the trade deadline, we acquired a second baseman named Craig Council. I was a rookie just trying to survive in the big leagues. That's not always going to look pretty. I said, I'll get the job done for you. He's got the chicken wing going with his arms. He's got the skinny legs. He, he looks like a chicken. So we'd always just say, that's the chicken man. It makes sense. You know, I understand why they gave me the name. We played a riveting World Series against the Indians that year, culminating in a seventh game that needed extra innings. In the bottom of the 11th, Council stood on third base next to Rich, representing the winning run. The 0-1 pitch. A liner off Nagy's glove in the center field. The Florida Marlins have won the World Series. When it was hit, I didn't know who to grab. I wanted to hug somebody. I'm trying to find Tim. I'm running, and I was starting to think the chicken scored. Right by the scoreboard is a clock. All of a sudden, I see Tim. His face is red as a beet. And he's screaming. He's saying, Dad, Dad, look. You know, what do you mean, look? What, look where? He says, Dad, look behind you. Look at the clock. It was a little bit past midnight, and I'm yelling at him. I'm like, Dad, Dad, I'm crying. I start crying, and I'm like, the chicken ran at midnight. I just became limp. Craig Council, the chicken, scored the winning run at midnight. I'll always remember that night because we won the World Series. But it was more important for another reason. In some magical way, my friend Rich Donnelly felt like he got one more night with his daughter Amy. I go my locker because I kept this note that Amy sent me in Atlanta. For five years, I kept it in my locker every day. I had a little book, I kept it in it. And I opened up that thing, that note, and I read it. And it was like, I want to call you Amy so bad. And I want to tell you that the chicken didn't run at midnight. It did. <laughs>